Yes, good morning, everybody. How are we all doing? Sam, are you not at People's TV? Getting propped up in my chair. Getting ready for some Bruno prop I'm going to be throwing at you. <laughs> I did that yesterday. I will continue to do that. We're going to be throwing a little bit of Mainu prop to kick off the show, though. Mainu getting his deserved call up. It's like Gareth Southgate, the whopper, which I will speak about Gareth Southgate later. Unfortunately, I've actually got to use some of my oxygen. I'm talking about Gareth Southgate in Manchester United. I know. But Gareth Southgate just. Ah, oh, you know, I've made my decision. Now we've got, don't worry, lads. We have got Henderson, all right? Midfield sorted. And then he watched the game against Liverpool and he's like, well, never mind. Never mind. Change my mind. But good morning to everybody. We're going to speak about Colby Maynard's call up to England. We're going to speak about the Gareth Southgate. I'm going to call it nonsense. I'm going to call it out for what it is. Uh, speak about Garnacho in Madrid. I said this on Twitter this morning, right? <sighs> Manchester United win a game of football. A big game of football, a galvanising, you know, let's, let's be honest, it's, that win against Liverpool <clears throat> is an FA Cup classic. It's going to be talked about years down the line. So what happens there? Hmm. Within 24, 48 hours, all right, Gareth Southgate is Ineos' number one choice and Garnacho wants to join Madrid. It is like clockwork. Who's down here from the member gang? Let's have a look. I'll tell you what, it's not a member gang anymore. I don't even know what to call it. It's like some, it's like White Walkers. <laughs> No, you're better than White Walkers. Let's not speak about Game of Thrones. It'll just get me upset. Some of the best TV ever. And the worst season. Well, the worst ending ever. Anyway, who's here? Marvin, good morning to you. Matt, we've got Stu, Anthony. Ant, how you doing, buddy? Carl, Ross, I can see you there. Uh, Saeed, Gren, Chris, Cormac. We've got Teresa. We've got Kelechi. Uh, we've got uh, Michael. Uh, Manoil. Ah, oh, look at that. Old school. How you doing? Who's here on Facebook? Let's have a quick look. David James. The David James? Probably not. Um, uh, Jerry, good morning to you. We've got Jaleel and we've got Jeremiah and, Jeremiah and Mo. Good morning to all of you. Hope you're doing well. I think we're going to enjoy this show. I think we're... Can I just say, I, I, I say this all the time, United People's TV, uh, as a community, as a channel, more people turn up <laughs> when we play well. Uh, I do not thrive in a negative environment. If United are doing poorly... No one really tunes in to listen to what I've got to say. <laughs> so it's good to see everybody sort of enjoying themselves, I suppose, after that game against Liverpool. Does that transform our season? No, we've won an FA Cup quarterfinal. Could it be a galvanising turning point? I mean, if you're not going to use a 4-3, 120th minute winner against Liverpool to... Pop that to pop their balloon of Klopp's long goodbye, then, I mean, you're not going to get anything that's going to galvanise energy in this squad. But let's speak about the here and now and the good stuff, and let's speak about this man. Now, I'm going to call him a man. I mean, you could, you could, if you wanted to, you could still call him a boy, but at 18, he's... The way he carries himself. Um, Kobe Mainu is a very, very mature 18-year-old player. Always was. Uh, he was a very, very mature 17-year-old player. He was a very mature-looking 16-year-old player. Anybody who has watched Kobe Mainu in the academy teams is not surprised by his, um, his playing style. May well have been surprised at his ability to just take that big step up. But at the same time, probably not. Because he has just been kind of just knocking down... Uh, goals every single time. Oh, come on in. Play for the under-18s. Done. Uh, make you make United debut. Done. Uh, make United full Premier League debut. Done. It, it, the, he is just His achievements over the last six months have been fantastic. And as I said, the only reason this has happened now, rather than when it should have happened, when the England squad was announced last week, it's Gareth Southgate just admitting to him, watching the game against Liverpool, and he goes... Well, I didn't do my research, did I? As England manager, it is quite literally my job to do the research, to know who the best players are and to make the best choices. And I I didn't do my research. Whoops. Come on in, Cobby. In you come. Um, I'm going to leave this as a poll for today. I haven't done a poll in a while. Everyone loves a good poll. Um, let me see what the answer to this is by the end. Do you think Cobby Mainu will go to Euro 2024? Right? There you go. 
And you're asking if stream is stuttering. I've got no drop frames. I've got perfect CPU usage. Everything is working on my end. So it can't possibly be me. I'm going to leave that as the poll as to whether or not you think he's going to be going to Euro 2024. But this is what Kobe Mainu had to say when he was just a little interview with Kobe after the, after the announcement. Talk to me about the call up. Yeah, it's a bit different. I mean, I got called up to the 21s and then um, got, a, got a text from Steve Holland and someone to come meet him at uh, the reception and just told me that I've been called up and that I'm uh, going to be with the squad for the week. I don't think it's really sunk in yet, but uh, yeah, I'm excited for the, the weekend. Have you texted home yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What did they say? Yeah, they're all buzzing. Awesome. <laughs> they're all buzzing. <laughs> I'm proper buzzing for the lab, man. And remember, by the way, I was gonna I was gonna mention this a little bit later, right? Actually, no, I will mention it a little bit later. No, that's what I'll mention it now. Um, right? If we if we look at sort of what Kobe Mainu has done in these last six months, right? Remember that all of this would have happened a few months earlier if it wasn't for that injury. And you can see, you can understand why Ten Hag feels. Pretty hard done by when it comes to injuries. Like our entire midfield setup. Like Kobe Mainu started, what is it? Had he started, I think, if I remember correctly. Who was the first game he started against? Was it Leeds? No, I don't think he started against Leeds. He started against Arsenal. I remember that. And he was dominant. And then he started against Real Madrid. I can't remember if he started the game before that. I think he might have come off the bench. Can't really remember. But anyway, it was that game against Real Madrid. You're thinking, how can Kobe Mainu cope? He was in there alongside Casemiro. He's playing up against Real Madrid. And he was looking great. And it was just a freak accident. I think it was um, Casemiro tackling Rodrigo. And then Rodrigo fell and all the weight fell on Kobe's ankle. An Kobe's ankle. But that injury there knocked him back three three months or so. Leeds, apparently. Was it Leeds? Yeah, it might have been Leeds in the preseason. Yet still, despite all of that, despite that setback, in November, he made his full Premier League debut. He became a starting 11 player. He's one player of the month for United. He's won Premier League goal of the month. Now he's got his first England senior call up. And I thought this was the class photo too. There was, there was some quality photos that came out from yesterday. Rashford there with Kobe Mainu. And there's a, there's a nice little um, sort of kickback that I saw somebody put on Twitter, which I think is... It's just kind of reflective of how th things have moved on. Like Marcus Rashford isn't isn't the young lad anymore. That was Marcus Rashford there, learning from Wayne Rooney when he was in the England environment, and now Marcus Rashford is one of the senior players. While Kobe Mainu breaks in to the England team environment, and now he's looking towards Marcus Rashford for advice and help in the same way that Rashford looked towards Wayne Rooney. I thought that was pretty cool. But I'm going to open the floor to the comments, right, and, and questions around Kobe Mainu. So, as I said, I think it was yesterday or the day before, I've been speaking so long about building a midfield that will properly unlock Bruno in the sense that it would take any responsibility away from him for having any sort of positional discipline in his own half and like creating loads of space and just being overzealous because he always will be overzealous. That's part of his game, right? But you build them. You build. You build this Man United midfield right now. Ineos. There's. There's a. There's only a couple of like guaranteed centerpieces. Alejandro Garnacho is one. I think Rasmus Hoyland is another one. And I think Kobe Mainu is another one. And it's um. That England midfield trio, by the way, Mainu, Rice, and Bellingham. That's got to be the most balanced, top-class midfield I think England, on paper, might have ever had. And you, you might think that's going crazy and going overboard. But even when we had the golden generation, it's like you had to squeeze. It's like, well, Gerard and Lampard never bloody worked together. And you got skulls on left wing because you're an absolute whopper. And then what? I can't remember who was in. Who was more the defensive midfielders in, that, in that, those times? I can't remember off the top of my head. But as a trio, the concept of Mainu, Rice and Bellingham, the profiles match each other. They kind of, they fit like three pieces of a jigsaw. Damn, 
Should have been Manu and Bellingham at United, man. Mm. I'm going to go down and read some of your comments here. Michael Carrick never just just got overlooked. I was going to say Gareth Barry, but that's what I mean. Owen Hargreaves, well, injuries. Owen Hargreaves was a great signing when we signed him, man. It's the year that we won a double, wasn't it? But as a, but as, as a balanced trio on paper, I think Mainu, Rice and Bellingham, I can see it really, really working together. Um, did, 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 did. Ross, you have you have people in the Discord in a Discord upset that thought that Cobby could be considered a starter. People won't. I mean, who's I love the idea of Kobe Mainu starting for England at the Euros, and I don't because I know what they'll do. We've seen it with so many United players before, and I mean it's not just United exclusive, but whether it's the insane racist abuse that um, Saka was it Saka Rashford and Sancho that missed penalties in the Euro final, or whether it's just the way Rooney was treated pretty much his whole entire England career, or whether it was what happened after World Cup 98 with Beckham. They want ammunition. They'll find ammunition. Tyler saying, Sam, would Maynou, um have had this rise if we had signed Bellingham? I mean, they're, they're different players, man. They're different players. They would, they would have complimented each other so, so, so ridiculously well, man. So ridiculously well. Um, I think the issue I would probably have with a concept of Mainu, Rice and Bellingham. Who do you think would be the deeper of the two between Rice and Mainu? Because they're both, they both have real qualities going forward. Maybe as a double pivot, they would kind of chop and change and switch. Maybe that would work. I don't know. Uh, but I don't like the idea of Kobe Mainu being shoehorned into a number six role. He's way, way better. Quite a few of you in the comments there are saying Declan Rice would drop. Um, maybe you're right. Maybe you're all correct. But they would both have the ability to receive the ball from the defence first. Either way, if Southgate doesn't win with this bloody team, man, I swear to God, I'm going to speak about him later in the, in the show. Man, what a team we've got right now. Obviously, it's on paper, it's not the golden generation, right? It doesn't have your Gerrard, your Lampard, your Beckham, your Scholes, your Rooney, your Owen, like Campbell. Yeah, yeah, yeah everything. No, no, Campbell. I don't know. I think I. No, that was about. That was the right generation. It's not quite that, right? On paper. But with Kane, with Foden, with Saka, with Rashford, you've got Grealish on the side there. Then in the midfield, you've got Manu, you've got Bellingham, you've got Rice. Defensively, you're probably looking at the, the point of the team you're going, eh, well, you know. That could be slightly better, but still very good. Man, it's quality. That is a team that should absolutely be competing with France. I mean, whether, whether they do or not, we'll, we'll find out. But I'm going to go down to the poll and see that 89% of you think that Kobe Mainu will go to Euro 2024. I would probably, um, I would probably agree with you. The way that Kobe Mainu is, as I said, if we go back to that bit there... If we look at what he's done, progression-wise, progression it's been it's been phenomenal. But not entirely unsurprising for anybody who's watched him. And that's that's the comp that is the biggest compliment I gave Kobe Mainu at the start. And it's just it's continued the whole way through. And you know what's um Nah, I won't say this. I won't say this just yet. I'm going to save that for a little bit later. What else have I got to say about Kobe? It's just, it's just United's academy, man. Um, I I did my video right. I did my video here, okay. And this was a video that I've been working on for a long time. Big up to Luke who helped with the edit. Big up to Steve who helped with the research and to Ronnie and the team. The team that we've got behind the scenes now, I, I say this all the time, like I can see it. The quality content is really starting to resonate. It's really starting to come through. And I can see that um, we're starting to build a little bit of a reputation for making those sorts of higher quality level content, which is good because I want to do a, a, an absolute ton more of it. But anyway, that video there about United's Academy. 
system. And the overhaul that's happened over the last seven, eight years or so, to the point now where last year, Alejandro Garnacho broke through and is an unadulterated first team star now. The following season, Kobe Mainu has broken through to the point where come March, despite being injured and despite not really playing until November, he has now broken through and become a first team regular. I'm not, I'm not going to put Kobe Mainu on a, a first team star status yet because I think Garnacho is, I think that'll be unfair on Garnacho. But ultimately, it's it's an inevitability. But the fact that our academy, two years in succession, has brought through like a first team, top level, international quality player, it bodes so well, man. And I, I can't stress this enough. That's why I did that video. And finally, I've, I've been delaying this a little bit, but I've got a, an interview series coming up with Academy Arena United. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, but I, you know, had surgery. Got a little bit delayed. Um, we're going to be having some interviews and some chats about the likes of Harry Amass, who... Where is it? That's the wrong one. We're heat. But Harry Amass has been called up into the England under-17 squad. Good luck to him. I don't know whether he'd be the next one. If you're looking at the under-21s, you're looking at... Was it Collier, who I think was on the bench recently? Uh, Sam Mather, who has been... I don't think there's anybody in the under 21s that I would go, I think he can make it. But there's quite a few in the under 18s where you go, they've got a they've got a potential. They really do. Whether you, whether it's Jace Fitzgerald in midfield or or Jack Fletcher or Harry Amass, maybe. I think Harry Amass will be in the preseason tour. I think there's going to be a few of them in the preseason tour. And this is something where like, I've got a picture of of Ten Hag and Bruno here, but it could—I don't really want that. I kind of want a picture of Ten Hag and, and the youth. Like, I re can you remember how angry people were when we sold Sidanic Bell, right? Dan Gore, a very good shout there, Thomas. But oh, Tom, I haven't seen you in a while. Um, I don't think Dan Gore's been—I think he's been injured at Port Vale, and I don't think he's actually played that much. But people were so angry at Zidane Bell being at leaving. Um, I think some people were even angry at Charlie Savage, which was just like, I mean, come on, mate, you're getting offended for the sake of being offended here. It's Charlie Savage. No offense, Charlie Savage, all that is quite offensive. Anyway, so those two leaving. A lot of people still hold anger towards James Garner leaving, seeing that he's become a regular player for Everton. And, you know, given the fact that we've got Ericsson, who's basically never been the same player since Andy Carroll tried to kill him on the pitch, and we spent 70 million on Casemiro, then, yeah, I think there's frustration there that's, that's justified. But these players have gone and look who's come through in Mainu and Garnacho. And there's more to come. If, if an academy system, right, and Manchester United, one of the absolute best in the world, that's the wrong one, one of the absolute best in the world, if our academy system can produce one player per season. Do you know how outrageous that is? That would be incredible. Last season, it was Garnacho. This season, it's Kobe Mainu. Let's see who the conversations are around come the end of this season. If I was to sort of predict it, I don't think Harry Mass is quite ready just yet. I don't know if there's anybody that are, like, that's properly knocking on the door in the same way that Garnacho and Mainu were. So next year, maybe there won't be a breakthrough on the level of those two, but there might be another couple coming through. Now, Willie Cambuela, Stephen, is a good point. Um, Cambuela, I've spoken about him before. If he didn't get injured for 18 months, you would have heard about him a lot earlier, probably about six months earlier. So Cambuela may well become, if uh, hypothetically, this summer, Right, I mean, this, this could happen. It might not happen, but it could happen. Varane could leave, Lindelof could leave, and Maguire could be sold. And if that happens, and Manchester United then go out and spend big on, in my opinion, I think we need to spend big on two centre backs, and then we've got Cambuala coming through. 
then maybe Cambuela can become that breakthrough next season properly and become more of a first team regular rather than coming on for a minute here or there. Um, oh man, thank you so much. Who's that? Dean. The Dean. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Football, by the hell. Fun fact. I remember I lived under the, uh, when I was at uni, um, in the tower I lived in. It's, well, it's pretty unfair, I'll be honest. My room was underneath the Dean of the, was it the Dean of University or was it the Dean of the Tower? Sod knows. Anyway, I've got so many noise complaints. I had to go see the Dean. I had to go see the Dean of the whole university. <laughs> Education, love me. <laughs> Shay Lacey is another one that you could talk about, but I don't quite think when I mean, he's, again, he spent a long time on the sidelines with injury this season. I don't think this, maybe next season could be Shay Lacey. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. But it's just exciting. And I saw this one as well. Cobby, a little bit, little bit agent Cobby. How are you doing there, Jared? Yeah, mate, you fancy it? I don't know whether... You know what my video is going to be today at lunchtime? I've been planning this for a little while, and I think today is kind of the right time to do it. I am going to release a video which runs through every position that Man United, I think, need to sign players for this summer. And we're gonna, I'm going to name three players in each of those positions. One, if we don't have a budget who would be like kind of the ideal signing for that position, all right? Number two, if we're kind of working towards a, you know, a reasonable budget, who could that player be? And then three, maybe a younger player that you could take a punt on that might be a risk. So three players for every position. I think there's five positions. You can do the maths. So it's going to be like a full-on transfer window kind of preview. Not with like any inside scoop or knowledge, but... If we're going to be looking at these positions, I think these players might be on our radar sort of vibe. That's, the, that's what the video is going to be this lunchtime. But yeah, Jared Branthwaite, spoiler alert, is definitely going to be in the conversation when it comes to centre-backs. Uh, what, what else are you saying down here? I'm liking the Cobby prop, man. Let's just keep, let's keep this Cobby conversation going for a little bit longer. Um, let me see what you're saying down here. Jack Fletcher. I like Jack Fletcher. Again, he's been slightly... I suppose he's been injured recently. Um, dilly -dilly -dilly. And you're talking about the concept of selling players on and Adam Academy stream becoming a revenue stream. It's a I think I saw I saw an argument once which kind of I was like, mm, well, I can understand the logic behind that. It's the idea that while you're going to be looking towards your Garnachos and your Cobbies as your top elite first team players, an academy can also bolster the squad and maybe have players that aren't quite good enough to be that elite first team player but could also kind of become like Scott McTominay's and could kind of like bolster your squad where you don't need to go and spend X amount bringing in a mid-level midfielder. You can probably do that from within. And I think there's a bit of logic to that as well. So I'll be interested to see what happens. United do need to be far better at selling in order to start buying. Um, Sam, do you think we will get a CDM, says G Singh? I mean, it's an absolute guarantee that Man United sign. I don't know whether it's going to be a CDM per se, like a like an out-and-out, old-school, proper defensive midfielder. But we are going to be signing a central midfielder who complements Kobe Mainu. That's the, that's, that's the profile now, right? That's the conversation. If I was Eric Ten Hag, I was going to my scouts, that's what I would say. I'd say, right, lads, I've got a midfield of Kobe Mainu and Bruno. Bruno's going to be the more aggressive number eight. Kobe Mainu is going to be the kind of number six, number eight hybrid. He can receive the ball from his defense, but also he needs to have the ability to go forward. So what I need there is a midfielder who complements that. Now, I don't think Frankie de Jong would perfectly complement that. He's incredible in possession, but what I kind of think we need is a, is a midfielder whose main attributes are incredible out of possession, covering space, um, being a genuine athlete. I, I, I don't know. It's interesting. It'll be very interesting, but I, we guarantee to sign a midfielder of some variety in midfield. We need that. Jordan? That wasn't you who gifted memberships. So that was Pete. Thank you very much, Pete. Who are they gifted to? We've got Bernard, Bernard. Everyone, everyone else remember Bernard's watch. I always get, get so annoyed with Bernard's watch. It's like, man, you've got like the, the greatest thing in the world. You stop. You stop your watch. 
then you take a chocolate bar and you leave a pound. No, Bernard, that's not how you use the watch. <laughs> they should have made it. <laughs> they should have made like a <laughs> an after hours Bernard's watch where <laughs> would have been a very different C TV show. That's that's for sure. I Casemiro. Um, I think Casemiro is my personal opinion. I think a big bid comes in from Saudi Arabia, uh, and I think we accept it on Casemiro. That's just what my expectation is, right? Just a guess. Um, I just I just can see it happening. Right. So, what's the next talking point? Oh yeah, going to enjoy this one. <laughs> Quite a few of you down there. <laughs> you did watch Burners Watch. Queen's Nose. That was a good one too. What well, Ghost Hunter? I used to remember Ghost Hunter. It used to scare me. Anyway. I digress. Let's speak about this man, all right? I spoke about some Bruno prop yesterday. And I made it clear. I said, I, there's, I'm quite open with this community. And I'll accept opinions. And we, Demon Headmaster, no, that was terrifying too. Um, I, I listened to what you got to say. And we, and we can have a debate to and fro. But I don't really listen to too much Bruno Slan slander 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 he's definitely got his faults but man are they over exaggerated by this fan base they really are I'm going to speak about it now John Jonathan how you doing dude nice to see you there man thank you very much hit the gong Bruno right I threw some prop into the chat yesterday that little interview where he was praising everybody and in he didn't really know what to do when the MUTV presenter said, look, right, you just let me say this to you. And then he kind of, he, he was kind of welling up. Now, this video has been going around, right? Which I'm sure you've seen. I'm not going to play it, which is a shame because I'd love to. Uh, I uh, Can I just say this actually before we start? So this is from the sort of access all areas, the different cameras before in the tunnel, in the dressing room, stuff like that. I'd love Man United to be making more content like this. This is the sort of content that Man United need to make rather than the clean cut kind of MUTV style content. MUTV and YouTube are different, right? It, it annoys me so much how poor Manchester United are at YouTube. They could be so much better. So much better. It just needs a, it needs a different strategy. It needs a different approach. It's just if you can't use that same sort of and MUTV is just poor to watch, man. It really is. Anyway, watch the access all areas video. I can't play it because I'm going to get shut down for copyright. Uh, but what's my point? My point here, right? So this is Rashford just after his miss. Okay, that miss that he had just before full time, and we all did the same thing, right? We were all like, oh my. I, I, I at that point I thought. We're going to lose this. I said, there's no way that we have the ability to sustain Liverpool for another 30 minutes. I was completely and utterly wrong. Right. And that's Rashford walking back, head in hands, pulls his shirt up, fuming. And who's that jogging from centre back? <laughs> that's Bruno Fernandes. His captain running straight over to him to console him and help him. And he told him, don't worry. He told him, you're going to get a goal. And what happened? Bingo. I just... I can't believe that... Or how much... Or I can't believe how little support overall in the fan base Bruno Fernandes has from United fans. This one here is a class little one as well. Garnacho celebrating. Oh, someone's put an awful video song on top of that. Go away. Bruno running straight over to, <laughs> straight over to Garnacho. <laughs> Give him a little bit of prop in his ear. Man, I love Bruno. I said it yesterday. I said it. I'll say. Um, I'd love to see that bloke lift. Some real silverware. Premier League, Champions League. That's what I'd love to see Bruno lift. I don't know whether it's going to... So how old is he now? He's 28. Realistically, we're probably going to have to do it within the next three years. 
I mean, I'd, it strikes me as Bruno's style of play, full tilt, 110%. His body's not going to last as long as some players do. So, I'm get, so I would guess we'd have to do it in the next three years. My prediction is that we we aren't. We won't do that in the next three years. That it won't happen. But I'd like to be surprised surprised pleasantly. But I'm pro I think I'm going to do a like um. I, we've done videos now. the the new The newer style of videos we did one on Rasmus Hoyland. Spoke about him and Van Nistelrooy. Just spoke about the sort of how well Hoyland's done. We did one on Paul Pogba and well him being banned for four years and that kind of a sad story really uh we did one on gary neville recently at the weekend and then i did one before that on lissandra martinez and all four of them have gone down really well they've resonated well in particular i think the gary neville one because i think that was a conversation that i've been wanting to have for a while that i'm surprised that you're not more united fans haven't had before and we did it so if anybody's got any ideas for videos like that um Fire them into Joe if you're watching. I think we should probably have like a video suggestions tab in Discord where you as the community can come and, and fire ideas to me. And, and if they work, then brilliant, your ideas come to life and help United People's TV make even better content. I think that'll be a cool idea, a way to include the community a bit more. I'll make that channel after this. Or if, if anybody can, Joe, if you're watching now, go and make a channel there for video suggestions and let everybody fire their suggestions in. Uh, but yeah, MU TV is properly. It just, it is a shame how bad MUTV is, if I'm, if I'm being completely honest. And it's, a, and it's a shame how bad Manchester United's YouTube is because they both should be industry leading. A bit like Manchester United. I think Man United's YouTube channel and Man United's TV channel are completely reflective of our football club. Once upon a time, they may have been the best. Eh, probably not. Nah, probably were. But not anymore. They are behind... They are so far behind. Um, and it's just a shame. I wish I were better. But look, right. I've waited half an hour to talk about this nonsense. And I'm only going to have this little conversation now, right? Man. Why do people, why do people like listen to it? I don't get it. Why do people... Why do people lap it up? It 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 takes. I I I didn't really take any notice of the Gareth Southgate conversation yesterday, right? So I saw it this morning, and I, it took me two minutes. I don't even think it was two minutes to research and find that it's all come from the bloody Daily Star. I've just been to the toilet beforehand. And I've got old copies of the Daily Star next to the toilet to wipe my ass with. <laughs> no, I don't. But that's what that is. It is toilet roll. It is garbage. It is the gutter press. You can just m make things up. And this is how it spirals, right? So, started there from the Daily Star. We can follow the... We can follow the, the um, you can follow the path. It's so easy. Daily Star, Jeremy Cross. Oh, yeah. The Bastion of reliable news. Where's that gone? Oh, that's been picked up by Mark Ogden. Is England Southgate the right manager for Man United? He's taken he's taken the fact that that was out there and going, you know what? I can I can write a story about it. And now it's on ESPN. Now, instead, and this, and this is what happens. People don't look for the source. They don't go back to the root and go, well, this is where it's from. It's obviously nonsense. They just do it on surface top level. Now it's on ESPN. Oh, it's also in the Daily Mail. And then this one here from Sky Sports Premier League this morning. And now there's going to be people, right, going around, United fans going, you seen what's on Sky Sports? It's like, mate, Gareth Southgate, number one. Are you kidding me? Mate, get Ratcliffe out. And they're going to be, they're going to be talking about it, saying Sky Sports are saying it. But it's not Sky Sports. It's not the Daily Mail. It's not ESPN. It's the bloody Daily Star. This is what United fans have to get smart. Not just United fans, but I would say... Uh, Dan, that's going to make me so. That's going to make, make me old as shit saying that. Yeah, fuck it. Uh, the youth of today. When it comes to absorbing news, I think a lot of uh, younger generation absorb your news on TikTok. So 
you watch a video and that's the gospel truth. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to verify whether that fact is correct or not. I'm just going to jump on, share it in a chat and say, oh my God, have you seen this? Nobody verifies anything anymore. It's just, you read something, Sky Sports News has said it, good, right, great. Just go back, find where it's come from. And as soon as you do that, and as soon, if you if you honestly did that, and you, you go, well, that's from the Daily Star, done, dusted. You're not sharing that with anybody. You're, you're, you're not going to take it seriously. You're not going to have the energy to react and say, oh my God, Gareth Southgate this or Gareth Southgate that. Because that's exactly what they want you to do. Exactly, you are just feeding the machine if you're doing that. Just don't do it. That's what I would, I would say. You know what I'm really, I said this to um, Ronnie this morning. You know what I'm really tempted to do? I'm not sure I can be bothered. It will take too long. But I, as an experiment, I really want to, I would love to start a false United transfer rumour. Speak to a few people, get it shared out on Twitter and stuff like that. Get it, I don't know, you won't be able to get it trending, but and then just get it picked up by newspapers and see how far you can take it. Just something you completely made up. I guarantee you we could make papers pick it up and prove from, from the very source of literally making a transfer rumour up that it's just going to be picked up by the press. By the press. I guarantee you it would work. It's just, it, might take a, it might take a long time to do. Uh, but as for, as for the conversation, there you go. Good conversation. Thank you very much, people. Let's move on. Did anybody else enjoy that interview yesterday? Because I did. And I said it in my, I said it in my reaction video. I said it's a, it still feels like a bit of a... Um, it feels like a novelty hearing um, just hearing our owner. Right? He is our owner. He's the owner of our football team now. The Glazers do not own Manchester United football team anymore. They may own the actual club. They may own the revenues, but they do not have a say anymore in how this football club is run per se. Of course, they're indirectly involved. Anyway, Jim Ratcliffe, just to, just to constantly hear him speaking openly, like when, when you've got nothing to hide, it's much easier to speak openly. You can just sit there naturally, just talk about a conversation because you're not accidentally going to say something that goes, boy, well, I shouldn't have said that. And I'm just enjoying it. Of course, of course, of course, there's still part of me which is tempered with Concern, what's actually really going to change it? But it, it really does feel different, man. It's felt it felt different straight away, and pretty much everything else since that has happened is different. And look, imagine hearing hearing an owner of United right saying this about who he wants to win the Premier League this season. Then obviously United, I think it's fair to say unlikely to win the league. Who would you like to see win it? I hate them all. <laughs> I hate them all. I'm going back and playing that again. Unlikely to win the league. <laughs> Who would you like to see win it? I hate them all. Again, this might just it may well just be lip service, but dude, he's good at lip service. I'm hearing an owner of Manchester United saying that he hates City, Liverpool and Arsenal instead of a Glazer who's ignoring everything that's happening on the pitch Ignoring how poor Manchester United are and going, well, lads, look, look at our commercial numbers. Oh, our revenue's gone up. Don't worry about it. Ignore everything they're saying about Man United being bad. Look how good we are. That's what the Glazers did. That's why they never spoke in public because they couldn't ever speak in the way that Jim Ratcliffe speaks. Because they, would, they wouldn't even know what they were talking about. Someone saying down there in the comments, you're reading it into it too much. Yeah, I think I am. But I'm enjoying it. I really, really am enjoying hearing an owner of Manchester United just being so public. It makes a big difference. And I think, as, as I said, everything I've seen so far is really positive. I would imagine, you know how, we're, well, we're kind of waiting right now on 
Ash, the Ashworth negotiations with Newcastle have clearly slowed down the progress that Ineos and Ratcliffe wanted to make. The, the, the progress that they were making, by the way, until we hit the sort of roadblock of Ashworth and Newcastle just being childish. And I guarantee you we get, we get the right deal on this. I would predict that Dan Ashworth is not involved in that. I think his gardening leave will probably, at the earliest, be until September. So I don't think we're going to see Dan Ashworth involved in the club this summer, which is a problem. But uh, as long as we've got Barada in, and he starts, I think, in at the end of the season, I think he starts. So he should be in for, before the summer. And the head of recruitment. That head of recruitment, it, I, I don't know, it feels like United might be trying to get Dan Ashworth done beforehand or at the same time. It's, it's all gone a little bit quiet. But I think at some point soon, it's just going to go... It's just kind of going to explode. And I hope we get the... Ashworth announcement and a head of recruitment announcement. Now, there's actually a story somebody reminded me about down in the comments, which I definitely should be speaking about today. So thank you very much. Let me pull this up. Forgot about that one. Where is it? This is all the prep work I normally do before the show. Rookie. Someone should sack me. Oh, look, there's, a, there's a conversation there. Right, there's one. Where is it? I swear it was before. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Two talking points. Two more talking points this morning. Um, Richard, you're saying you need to use your Ollie clip in your show. Check your DMs. Ladies and gents, if anybody DMs me on Instagram, I don't read Instagram DMs anywhere near as quickly as I read Twitter Instagrams. Because Twitter, Instagram, Twitter DMs, you're far more likely to get a response out of me than Instagram DMs. Because Instagram DMs, I get so many DMs on there. I don't know, I don't know how to bloody stop them. Twitter's far more manageable. Anyway, two conversation points here. I think quite a few of you were speaking about Rafa Varane in the comments earlier. Let's finish with these two. Right, number one. Fabrizio is saying that there's no confirmation on reports about a new contract proposal from Man United to Varane based on appearances. United have currently not sent any new deal. No negotiations taking place. Place. My personal prediction is that Varane will leave. I don't think... I think even if Manchester United... I've said this before. Even if Manchester United go in with... Let's be honest... It would have to be like a 50% wage cut, something along those lines for Varane to sort of fit into where he is in the team, somewhere in the region of like 150 grand a week. There are thereabouts. I just don't see how Rafa Varane accepts that. If, let's be honest, he's going to be offered a bumper contract by Saudi Arabia, some sort, some Saudi, and especially because he's free, it's going to be even more. I don't, I just don't, I can't tell you the competitive drive of Rafa Varane, but it just strikes me at this point in his career, having won it all with Real Madrid, he'd rather go off into the sun for a couple of seasons, earn more than he ever has in a league which is far easier, enjoys the sunshine, sets his family up for a long old time. That strikes me as what Varane will do, and I couldn't begrudge him for it. And I don't think we should be, and he should not be re-signed on a 300 grand a week deal. That's that's not the right, that's not the right idea. But yeah, uh, Fabrizio saying no conversation there. And I've seen quite a few people speaking about this, right? Little conversation about Christian Eriksen. And you're saying that, you know, Evans can fit that bench role. Hey, Evans, we thought Evans was going to fit the bench role this season. Instead, he's played a ton. So if, if, in the summer, I, I my prediction is that there's more turnaround with our centre backs than anywhere else in the squad in the summer. I think you could honestly see Varane leaving, Maguire leaving, Lindelof leaving. That's three. I think you could see three out, three in. No, maybe three out, two in, and then Cambuela promoted to be that third. And then you've got Johnny Evans. So then you'd have Martinez, Evans, Cambuela and two new centre-backs. That's why I think. Um, Alex saying, make him a take it or leave it offer and let him decide. Maybe we have, maybe we will. I don't know. 
I think I'm, I apologize, by the way, ladies and gents. I think on here, I'm getting a little bit more. Oh, actually, can I do that? Uh, never mind. I figured out where the super chats are, so I won't miss them now. Thomas, you've been busy working. How you doing? Right, I figured it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there we go. Right. Now it feels better because I was missing some of your comments earlier. I oh, know your super chats. 1,200 votes, by the way. I love that. How many likes on the video? Someone tell me. I still need to get a counter on here somewhere. But I bet you it's not 1,200. So if you can, drop a like on the video. Varane, my prediction is that he won't be a Manchester United player next season. Let's see what happens. And Christian Eriksen. Now, I mean, there's nothing outrageous about what you said here. I think some people will try and take it on... Uh, Oh, he's unhappy. He's, he's, oh, Christian Eriksen wants to leave, blah, blah, blah. It's, truth be told, right, Eriksen has never been the same player since Andy Carroll legitimately just assaulted him on the pitch. He had no intention of going for the ball and didn't get sent off for it either. The big-ass bloke that Andy Carroll is went full tilt at, like, knee level, side on to Christian Eriksen, and he's never been the same player since. Prior to that, Ericsson was so important for us. I could see Ericsson staying for one more season, maybe, uh, because I think there's going to be such an overhaul defensively this summer. Um, but I also wouldn't be surprised to see Ericsson leave and, for example, Dan Gore come in and play inside that role. I I wouldn't be surprised to see Christian Ericsson leave and I would put him down as a fantastic free signing man loved him last season really really did at a time when we desperately needed a player like that he was better than we thought he was going to be and he played and remember I said it, Frankie de Jong was supposed to be signed last summer Christian Eriksen was supposed to be signed as the backup to Frankie de Jong we never then signed Frankie de Jong okay right Eriksen's got to play every single bloody game and it took its toll Nuruddin King Nuruddin I can't believe that I can't believe that football bloody hell Indeed, Fergie. Indeed. This community. Bloody hell. But yeah, Ericsson, my personal prediction, wouldn't be surprised to see him leave. And same with Varane. We have got some big old changes coming this summer. I tell ye that. I tell you that. But, ah, I enjoyed that show. I'm, it's nice to come on here and have some positive conversations. A little, I say a little win. It's a big old win. But just a galvanizing win and United still are just a sleeping giant. And this week has just shown that to me. How many people have just come out of the woodwork? Oh, yeah, coming in. I can't wait for United to be back on top. This is gonna be when United these next these next five five years, I say, next five years here on United People's TV are gonna be, I think, the most fun I've ever had. Covering Manchester United. I started the People's Person website. In 2011. I think. It was never my full time job at that point. So I got to enjoy. Our last title under Fergie. But I've been full time on this since I think. I think it's 2013 or 2014. I think one of those two. On the website and now with YouTube. <laughs> so I've never done it when we've won the league <laughs> and we've been we've been going a long time but the next five years I think are going to easily be the most enjoyable the community that we've got here the direction the trajectory that our club is in and players like Kobe Mainu coming through man when we're good again I'm going to be insufferable I can't wait but look thank you everybody for tuning in uh, I hope you enjoyed the show I'll wrap it up for today today's lunchtime video as I said probably going to get out around about one o'clock-ish because I've got a meeting at 11. I'm going to run through each position that I think United are going to be making signings in. And I'm going to name three players in each position. A dream signing, a realistic signing, and maybe like an under-the-radar signing in each one. All right? Big up to all of you. Hope you enjoy yourself. And Kobe Mainu, woo Ball up!